Congrats on a long career, Molly. How Thank does you. it feel? I don't think it's quite sunk in yet. Um, mix of emotions. Uh, I mean, I've loved playing soccer, and I'm really going to miss it. I'm probably going to start crying, so I'm going to try to keep it together and keep it short. But um, I'm really thankful for the organization. I was really glad to play here all three years of my professional career. Um, but at the same time, I'm really looking forward to starting a new chapter in life, moving on, and I'll become the Breakers' number one fan, watch all the games, keep in touch with all the girls, coaches. Uh, coach, even though Molly's now leaving for the yep. past couple of games, you were pushing her higher into the midfield a little bit. Um, can you talk about your thinking behind that? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask. We've already been there. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I was just throwing me. <laughs> um, look, look, obviously we've had, we, we, we've got players missing with injuries and um, we, we've had to um, sort of mix it up a little bit over the last sort of three, four weeks, which has been really frustrating with Christy and obviously being injured. Um, so from that perspective, obviously Molly's played wide, um, done well in training and very versatile player, so obviously we're we're disappointed that we're going to be losing Molly, but of course you can't give out the opportunity that she, she's been she's been given. But um, that was the full process behind that, and it started well. But then Kristen got injured, and it obviously disrupted us in that game for that period with the changes that we made. Um, but as I say, you know Molly's a versatile player. I mean, using centre mid the other day in training, and she looked so composed and cultured in there. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a blow to lose Molly, but obviously we, we completely understand. <laughs> you should limit your answers to one laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, did you ever think, you know, when you got drafted, that it would be 50 plus starts for no. you in your career? No, I mean, I was actually a late signing um, when I was drafted. I wasn't drafted, I wasn't picked up initially. I was a discovery player and kind of worked my way in there. First year starter off the bench and then kind of built in and every game it's a fight and every game it's you have to work for that starting spot and I mean it's been such an honor to play so many minutes and so many great different players um, wearing the breakers uniform. Um, coach, so you kind of moved the team's formation around near the end of the game. You also did it against Orlando, like there was a lot of shifting and I know you said you wanted a fluid style, but how well is the team responding to, you know, multiple formations in a game? It's not, look, it's... A lot of it's due to the personnel that I have at the moment. You know, if you look at the bench tonight, um, <clears throat> we, 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 we felt tonight we wanted to get two bodies more centrally because we wasn't wasn't causing enough problems at the top end of the pitch, and especially first half, their overload down our right our right hand side caused us problems. Um, but it, it's difficult. Look, we're in a difficult period at the moment. Obviously, it's, it's, it's tough when when you're losing games. Um, and, I, and I said it the other day, you know, the players come in week in, week out and they put a shift in and, you know, we started well today, we could have been 2-0 up before, before we conceded the penalty. Um, but of course, when you're a team that's low on confidence, obviously Sky Blue sees the initiative on that and punished us when they got their second. But, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we can't, I said it to you before, that I can't afford to have too many players missing, you know, with, with, with the situation, I mean, obviously Brooks suspended, Christy Mewis injured. Um, you know, we lost McCall a few weeks ago and didn't anticipate Christy being out as as, as long as she has been. But um, you know, it is what it is. It's giving other players minutes. You know, it gives us a, or it gives me a good opportunity to see whether they can play at this level. And um, you know, from that side of things, I'm already planning for next year. But that doesn't mean that we've given up on this year. We still want. To try and pick points up. We still want to try and finish the season positively because we can take that positivity into 2017. And um, as I say, I'm looking forward to Natasha coming out. I'm looking forward to you coming out on Monday. Um, it gives us more bodies. Um, it gives me a little bit more quality as well. Um, so, so from that side, we've got an opportunity to get Kristen Westfield fit again, Kristen Mewis fit, Libby Stout fit. So if we can with them two coming in, if we could get them free fit, it gives me some good options within within the team to make sure that we're we're com we're competitive. And you know, apart from let's forget the New York games and Chicago, we've been in most of the games this year. You know, the Orlando game was probably my lowest point in football. You know, that was probably worse than losing the FA Cup final for Chelsea on penalties. The way that the way that it panned out. Um, 
but that's just been the story of our season and um, you know <clears throat> we just got to keep being positive and keep doing the right things. So you guys scored two goals in a game the first time <laughs> and you've now yeah. scored in consecutive games so you count that as progress? <sighs> Look, the, the, the answer is going to be yes because obviously you know we've been doing a lot of stuff in training to make sure that we're, we're, we're trying to work on them things, we're trying to find the right balance, we're trying to get people fit. Obviously Louise went wide today because of Brooks suspension and Molly dropping back in. Um, but look, you know, it's, it's frustrating because we want to be winning games and, you know, you know, I can say for, you know, the, the players do come in and work hard and we work hard as a coaching team just to make sure that we, we turn it around. But as I say, for, for whatever reason, we've just not crossed the line in some of these performances this year and um, hopefully, as I say, adding the two girls coming in and getting players back fit, we can start to cross the line in some of these performances. Uh, Karshini would be in one day? Yep. Alright, do you expect her to play soon after that? Or um, look, this, this is a tough league, you know. <clears throat> You've got to give, especially international players, time to come in and settle in. Um, like I said, this has probably been my biggest learning curve as a coach. I've said it's been my toughest job. Um, but f for me, if, if I could have my time, I would do things differently for sure. Um, but I've learned from one or two things that have happened at the start of the year, and obviously with trades, and that's a completely different system, um, which will put me in good stead for next year in making sure that Boston Breakers are a team that can that, that can compete and you know win games when when we've been so tight in them. You know, if you look at again today, some of the opportunities we've had, you know we've scored two, you know we had Sheps one in the first half, we had another scramble in front of the goal. Uh, Steph McCaffrey's had two opportunities today. So it's not that we haven't been creating chances. As I, said, I mean, apart from the New York game, we've been creating double figures in chances every week. Um, same as Orlando, we had a great opportunity to f kill the game off McCaffrey and, and Bettman, but we just we just didn't do it, and we got punished for it. And that's that's been what's been happening to us this year. And that's top level football. This is why this is probably the best league in the world, because if you don't take your chances, the opposition are. If that if they if that happens and. But again, this afternoon or tonight, it's happened to us again. Mm -hmm. uh, last one from me. Yep. Uh, you said Dowie's paperwork is pending, but do you have a timeline on her, like a rough timeline? Uh, yeah, well, so, so a visa's been approved. Um, so she's a, she's put to an appointment with the embassy. So once she gets that, it's just a quick turnaround. So we're hoping that she's here by the end of next week. Okay. Um, as I say, so we will get a good week's training in prep to the Orlando game. Um, but like I said, you know, we're, we've got half an eye on next year, we've got half an eye be between now and the end of the season. And as I said, these players coming in obviously just need a little bit of time to settle in because it is a tough league to play in. So do you think the Natasha signing is more trying to salvage something out of the season or do you think it's more long term or both? Both. I, I mean, look, Natasha scores goals. And I've also got first hand experience of that, um, working with her from my time at Charlton and Liverpool. Um, you know, one thing that I tried to do when I first took over at Liverpool was sort of build a spine. Um, and we had Whitney Ingen in that, Gemma Bonner. I had Farrell Williams and Natasha Dowie within that. And then obviously we brought players in and around it. And that's something that we're trying to build at Boston Breakers with regards to making sure that we have a strong 11. We have at least four or five impact players. And, you know, then we have players that we can develop and progress and, and, and create competition. and. Um, generally, uh, as a coach, I'm planning six months ahead. Coming into this job, I didn't have that opportunity um, because of going from one job to another. <laughs> and obviously, coming into this country and, and, and learning teams, players, um, as I said about the trade system, I think that's the one thing that really took me by surprise because in Europe, you're speaking to players, you know them personally, you know what they can bring to the table, you get the opportunity to show them around your facility and talk to them about your plan for them as, you know, the real trades, it's just bang done and the player doesn't really have a say in that, so um, them, them conversations are real difficult, they're, they're awkward, it's like going on your first date or something, you know, when you're sitting across the table with someone not knowing what to say, that's the only way I can describe it, but um, like I say, look, I've learned so much this year so far, I'm not happy with the record, I'm not happy where we're on the league table, the players aren't happy either. Um, and we're determined just to try and make sure we have a positive end to the season.
So not only pulling up Strom for her first uh, professional performance, you put her in. How do you feel she did? Yeah, Kylie done well. She's been she's been progressing nicely in training. She's been with us all year. She's she's done well for the reserves. Um, we just wanted that. <clears throat> I like to try and have that natural balance, especially if we're playing with a three, that someone on their left foot can get the ball and distribute it rather than on a right foot player tends to cut in. Um, but no, I've got no qualms of putting Kylie in because as I say she's she, she's she's done well all, all, all year for us in training, and as I say the reserves game she's done well as well. So from that side, there was no. No issues with putting her in. Great. Thanks, guys.